I actually did J50 and Wheezy Port too. Mm. It came out two years ago, and I I spoke to my uh my my current <clears throat> thoughts and feelings about where they were at, at this stage. And when I did that song, it was me saying Jay Z has evolved in a way that is clearly visible uh, musically. Uh, his last offering to us was the 444 album, and you can hear on that album, this is a dude who has turned the corner and is seeking to educate through his art now. Right. Talking about investing, talking about mistakes he made by not investing, talking about uh, infidelity in his marriage, and talking about his love for his mother, you know, uh, and and her, uh, her homosexuality and all that type of stuff. Right. I was like, this is, this is education through art. Jay... Jay took heed to the message. As for the other two, with 50, I felt like 50 found a new lane since the time I wrote that song to where he's not primarily seen as a rapper at this stage, but he's still a creative. Hmm. But I've also felt like uh, in terms of him seeking to create, even with you know movies and TV shows, seeking to create with uh, a goal of, uh, of educating or inspiring or empowering people, uh, no pun intended, power, but but empowering people. I felt like he hasn't made that decision, you know. Um, of course, he has the G Unity Foundation, and now he's uh, he's in my backyard. He's in Louisiana with the Humor and Harmony Festival, and just did that type of stuff. But and he's building his own Tyler Perry, basically. Yeah, building his own Tyler Perry. So as a businessman, he's continued to elevate. But in terms of what type of content do you plan on pushing out through this studio, you know? And are you aware of the impact that content is going to have on people who, man, I won't name this person. I won't name this person. A very high-profile celebrity, right? Rapper slash with a bunch of slashes because they do a bunch of things. And we had a business meeting the other day. And during the business meeting, uh, they were adamant about, before we meet D, before we discuss any business, man, I got to watch this new episode of Power. Straight up. And we sat there and watched this whole episode of Power, right? Whole episode, bro. And that let me know right there that 50 still is influential with the content he's creating, even if he's just behind the scenes now. So the impact of that content that it's having on adults and potentially adolescents, uh, I don't know if 50 has really sat down and had um, uh, a heart-to-heart -heart with himself or with any of his advisors about um, what message he wants to send out there. If it's just for the sake of entertainment, he's been great at entertaining us since Get Rich or Die Trying dropped in 2003. Mm -hmm. But entertainment <clears throat> mixed with education or entertainment mixed with some form of inspiration or empowerment, uh, I don't think he has made that turn at this point. How do you look at the it's complex, the industry he's building in Shreveport? Does that potential economic empowerment that I guess potentially could be t uh, tied to that venture, does that factor Good, into how you look at it? Great question, brother. You brought up a word earlier about uh, morality. Morality was a big part of what I discussed in my song, J50 and Wheezy. Uh, I think economic empowerment is important and is very needed, but I've seen in hip-hop culture, economic empowerment become an excuse for having a moral compass that's on zero. You know, the message that we are sending will be deplorable, ex extremely disrespectful to our heritage as black people, to our women, you know, to our youth. And because that message is bringing in money and bringing in revenue and now you're employing people, people justify it in their head and they employ the cognitive dissonance to say, well, Deep down, I know what I'm saying is probably not having a positive impact, but the money I'm making and what I'm doing and who I'm helping with that money is having a positive impact. I experienced that firsthand. Uh, not a second applause. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give you props. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that was it. That's, I mean, I think that's a. Before we move on, I want to hear what you experienced, but that is a point that I. I don't feel like I hear loudly enough, often enough. And one of my favorite things about your evolution as a person, as an artist, and as a voice is that you remind people mm -hmm. of the connection between art and energy and spirituality and who we are as a people. Mm. And you do it so easy. Mm -hmm. There is, a, we've added a moral connection to financial success, mm -hmm. almost reflexively. Mm -hmm. And we give people fucking passes. Excuse my French, yeah. excuse mm -hmm. my language. Mm -hmm. uh, but we give people passes because they're paid. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I can't really, I mean, I know he out here 
right. killing kids, but he did employ a lot of people. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I, I, I think uh, you just you you summarize that so well. Thank you, brother. Uh, a lot of people try to come for me because I'm a Christian, and they'll try to use that against me when I speak to the morality inside of hip hop or the lack of morality inside of hip hop, right? So I say, okay, you can be Christian, you can be Muslim, you can be Buddhist. Whatever it is that you believe in, show me a God that is pleased with financial success, but uh, personal uh, personal negativity being glorified and, and, and personal objectification and uh, disruptive, you know, negative energy being placed at the forefront. Show me, show me that in any religion. And you'll, you'll struggle to find it. Right. You'll struggle to find it. So that's why for me... It is at the forefront. I'm just like, yo, we are we are addicted to what has become delicious poison. That's what I call it. It's it's clearly poison if you just take the the lyrics and if you take the messaging at face value and you say, don't try to make an excuse for it. Don't say where it's charting at on billboard. Don't say how much money is generated and how they can help out people. Just take the message at face value. It's poisonous. Mm. But it's delicious because of that BPM, you know what I mean? Because of them 808s, because of that marketing machine behind it that's pushing it. So now it's delicious poison. And Tastes good. And we there you go. <laughs> and we focused on the delicious part. We are so focused on the delicious part that we can't necessarily feel the poison right now. Or we are immune to the poison because everybody loves to be the exception to the rule and say, well, I grew up listening to gangster rap my whole life, and I turned out pretty good. I ain't never do no jail time. I ain't never kill nobody. So it can't have a harmful effect on people. It didn't have that on me, you know. But for every D1 and Justin Hunt, there's a Carl LeBlanc, you know what I'm saying? That's my best friend who got murdered in the streets of New Orleans, you know what I mean? We grew up listening to the same music, same, same hot boys, Anthems, same No Limit catalog. The difference is I had a few key people in my life who made it to where no matter how much I listened to that music and wanted to be influenced by that music, I was afraid to disappoint these people who poured into me positively. I had a few life experiences that Carl didn't have. I went to Ghana at the age of 13. So while I'm wanting to be a hot boy, I'm sitting here in Ghana for almost a month of my life on a cultural exchange trip and realizing, man, all of the materialism and everything that's glorified back home, they don't have any of that over here, but they are happier than us. And they live in huts without electricity and they got to go to boarding school and leave their families just to attend high school, you know? And they have a joy that radiates from them that we don't have back at the crib because we're upset that we didn't get the new Jordans or the new Jabos, you hear me, or something like that. Right. So Carl didn't have all of them same, you know, uh, uh, experiences that I had. So the music we were listening to became more of a soundtrack to try to emulate what he was listening to. And me seeing my best friend, bro, Carl went to McLean. Carl went to the same school. Yeah, Carl went to the same school as Lil Wayne. Mm. You know, like... We were all magnet school kids, man, and me just seeing that, um, you know, I could have easily not been where I am today. Uh, and with that being said, as an artist, I used to make $39,000 a year when I was a middle school teacher. So I was like, as an artist, I heard Dave Chappelle say this. He told his uh, dad, I think one time, like, if I could make the same amount of money I made when I had a job by doing comedy, I'm winning. You know, that's success to me. So for me, it was like, if I never reached six figures, seven figures, eight figures, as long as I could make 39000 a year by doing what I love, I'm happy because I know I'm convinced that by being a rapper, D1 will be able to have more impact on the community than Mr. Augustine had as a middle school teacher because there were confines to what I could teach about, what I could speak about, um, and, and how real I could keep it in that middle school classroom right. or I could lose my job. As D1. The same school system that's taking y'all to see Ice Cream Man? It, it, crazy enough, bro. Yeah, crazy enough. They 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 were trying to they were trying to come down on me because uh especially when they found out I was a rapper, it's like I had this extra light that was being shined upon me because now they were like, oh, he's a rapper. Um the principal was a pastor, right? 
So this was, although it's the same school system, the principal at my school was a pastor, and he was like, oh, wait, I found out that you are a rapper as well, Mr. Augustine. Um, I don't want you bringing any of that rap stuff into the classroom. And why is because his connotation as a black man in his 50s of rap music was it's all going to be negative, have a harmful impact on our students. So you need to separate those two. And matter of fact, he gave me an ultimatum. If you want to be serious about your career as a teacher, you should probably leave this rap stuff to the side, take all these videos off of YouTube and all this type of stuff. I remember us having that talk. Yeah. And that was the that was around the time I made the song J50 and Weezy because I knew um, I'm going to be quitting this job at the end of the school year because this man just gave me an ultimatum. I'm going to choose rap and I'm going to take all of these experiences I'm having as a teacher and try to, you know, bottle them up and turn them into uh, actual songs that, because there's nothing like being in the moment, experiencing stuff and being like, let me create about what I just went through today at work or at school, you right. know? So J50 and Weezy came about from that. <clears throat> A song called One Man Army, okay. which went on to be a big song in my right, catalog, right. Um, came about from that, you know, and yeah, bro. So where do you see Wayne? Where do I see Wayne? Uh, I don't think that Wayne's content has evolved, not one bit. Uh, I think his skill set has evolved. Wayne is an even better rapper in 2024 than he was in 2009 when I made that song. Yeah. But in terms of his content, I don't think it's evolved, man. I mean, I have to agree with you. You know, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I referenced the reaction I did to Georgia Bush on the channel, and I found myself having to defend Little Wayne's myopic content. Mm. I had to remind people that Wayne has done more than just money, hoes, clothes. Mm -hmm. like, he has done more than money, hoes, clothes, drugs. Mm. And I had to remind a lot of people in my audience, because mm. a lot of them don't remember... Georgia Bush, Hollywood divorce, they don't remember. They don't know what happens on Tuesday and Thursday. They, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah. like, yeah. but I had to, it's at the point now where I have to reach so far back. Uh. It was one thing when I was making this point in 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. It's a total another thing to have to make that point in 2014 with the same songs, mm. the same reference points. Mm. And I personally think that it's a real tragedy because he's an amazing communicator, amazing artist, mm -hmm. amazing influencer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't necessarily call it stunted growth. I think more than anything else, I'm not sure in general, from the outside looking in, and I don't mean this as shots, I don't make diss tracks at all, but I do provide critique as part of my job. I'm not sure how much he's challenged himself really in life. Uh. And I, that perspective comes from the fact that generally artists that I follow or leaders that I follow, they go through evolutions. Mm -hmm. You know, their mission might be the same, but they progress mm -hmm. down that path. Like you're a great example, for example, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if Wayne has actually progressed down even the money path. Mm. I don't know if he's progressed down even the star power path. I'm mm. not sure if he's actually progressed mm -hmm. on the influential path. Mm -hmm. And maybe all those things are separately, but I think most of us in this internet that this conversation is gonna end up on, probably agree that he hasn't really evolved even artistically mm -hmm. he might be a better rapper mm -hmm. but i'm not sure he's making better songs got you you know and that's just me saying i'm not putting that on anyone else mm -hmm. i'm coming from a place of love with it mm -hmm. i'm not a little way hater by any means mm -hmm. but i think certain realities are kind of hard to avoid like i think if you make that song again let's say you do j50 wheezy three mm -hmm. j and 50 are very far away from little way mm -hmm. yeah regardless of whether you appreciate the evolution or whatever there's an evolution yeah definitely yeah, so, you know, and I, I say that, I describe Wayne that way, not as a means of disrespect. Mm -hmm. But I think, sincerely, if you do, J50, Weezy 3, mm -hmm. it's pretty obvious that J and 50 have evolved, mm -hmm. at least from a public perspective, from mm -hmm. the, the offerings they make to the public, mm -hmm. significantly more mm -hmm. than Lil Wayne. I've started to pray for Lil Wayne over the past few years, uh, uh, not only health-wise, but just praying for him because... Man, when I lost my grandmother, right, that was 2020, right, when COVID started. And that was the first close family member that I had ever lost in my life, right? And, man, like, that stuff hit me like a ton of bricks. And when I thought about one thing I didn't have any sadness around, it was around the fact that she and I, we didn't have any, uh, we didn't leave any stone unturned when it came to 
us maximizing our time here together, right? And I feel like even her as a woman, uh, as a mother, as a wife, as a grandmother, she didn't, she died empty. She she poured out everything that she had, right, um, to, to give. When I think about so many artists in the rap game, and Lil Wayne being one of them, because obviously I'm super influenced by that brother, and I love that brother. When I think about him, I'm just like, man, I would hate for it to get to where that brother was not able to turn the corner to not only just be a great lyricist, but all the other things you just named, leader, songwriter, um, uh, uh, thought leader, uh, mogul, like, like all these other things that require more than just getting back in the booth and just rapping whatever comes to your head on whatever beat, you know, comes on. It's just like there's, there's more to be offered than, uh, I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. In life, the goal is to find your slingshot, you know, because you got this hoodie, right? Exactly. Yeah. So just like the story of David and Goliath, David defeated Goliath right. because he did three things. He found his slingshot, right? He found his special gift. For me, that's rapping. Mm -hmm. For a uh, dude like Lil Wayne, that's rapping, right? That, find your slingshot. Then use your slingshot. The key is how to use your slingshot because you can use your slingshot to either do step number three, which is defeat your Goliaths, or you could use your slingshot, and it's not to defeat your Goliaths, but it's to actually fool around and be defeating your own army or defeating your own community, right? Defeating yourself. And metaphorically, a lot of people are using the right gift for the wrong purpose. So imagine David, instead of tossing a stone at Goliath, if he had started tossing that stone, those stones at his own army, right? If he's tossing those stones at his own army, all of a sudden, you got a dude that's really talented, that's misusing his gift, so that same pain he inflicted upon Goliath, he's now inflicting it upon his community. And that's what I find that a lot of artists are doing in hip hop. You found the right gift, but you're using it for the wrong purpose. Mm -hmm. And because there's a reward system inside of hip hop, Justin, that financially rewards you and incentivizes you and pays you for using that gift, the powers that be and, and the, the, uh, the entertainment moguls and the execs at labels, they don't care how you use that gift, as long as it's going to be something that's going to produce some form of financial return, right? So when they see that you are using your gift, it may be for a purpose that's harming your own community or even harming yourself, you know, as long as it's making money, they're going to continue to push it. They're going to continue to promote it. And I feel like we have a whole industry to where that's what's happening now. So much so that just as important as trying to speak some sense and some life into the artist, we have to speak that same sense and life into the fans because the fans are now craving this music to where the fans will actually get mad at an artist like Wayne if he tries to evolve. You have people like us that sit here like, yeah, yeah, rooting for him. Like, yeah, brother, like, this is what we've been saying. And you have some people that's down for that shift. But you'll have a lot of fans who will be like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. And you know how I know it's true? Because they did it to Young Jeezy. Yeah. Because they did it to Ludacris. Right. Because they do it to various people. Jay-Z, I think, successfully pulled off the evolution musically. Yeah. But a lot of people, their own core fan base would disown them when they tried to evolve.